Hi, in the previous video, we're talking about for statics, we have first set of equation, summation of forces, sigma f equal to zero, right? So now we're going to focus on how do we sum up all those forces, right? For example, I have uh, a point indicates this object, and it might have several forces acting on it. For example, I have F1, F2, F3, F4 on it. And we want to see if I'm going to add all those four forces, what's going to be the resultant? What's the magnitude? If the magnitude is zero, then this object will be static, will be at equilibrium. If the resultant is nothing but zero, or is some other value but zero, for example, sum of forces here could be equals to 5 newton then we know this is not equilibrium right so there's a resultant force so that's called a resultant force resultant force is add all those force together if resultant force equal to zero then we know this is going to be at static if it's not equal to zero, we know it's going to be not a static. Okay. So we need to figure out how do we add all those forces together. So now let's look at this example. Right here, actually, I'm going to just use this one. Force at A here is going to be, let's say, 2 Newton. And force at B here, let's see if it's a 3 Newton. So if you add two A and B, forces at 2 Newton and uh, 3 Newton, what's going to be the resultant force? Well, what do you think? 5? Can I add 2 Newton plus 3 here equal to 5? Well, if we did that, we have to rethink about it. Are those two forces at the same direction? No, they are not at the same direction. When they are at not at the same direction, we cannot add them up anymore. Why? Because it's vector, vector addition. Vector means two things. First one, it's going to have a magnitude. For example, 2 Newton. Then the second thing is going to be direction. It's tell us, for example, if this force we defined, this is our x-axis. It's going to be from x-axis counterclockwise, 30 degree. Well, now you know where the direction is, right? How? Because it's counterclockwise from x direction 30 degree. We know exactly where it's located, which direction is pointed. So that's a vector. Have both magnitude and direction. So 2 Newton and 3 Newton in this scenario, they are not at the same direction at all. Then we cannot add them. So vector addition is no longer 2 plus 3 equal to 5. That's wrong. So how do we find vector addition? So we're going to use method number 1. We're going to introduce parallelogram. Well, as the name indicates, we're going to draw a parallelogram. So how do we do so? Let's use this example. A, 2 Newton. B, 3 Newton. So first step, we are going to create this parallelogram. How do we do so? We are going to, from the head of B, draw a line that is parallel to A, right here. Then, we also are going to go from another head at A here. So from the head of A, we are going to draw a line that is parallel to this force B. And so you have those two lines right here, right? Then this point right here, it, this intercept right here. So we're going to draw from this point, the force is applied at to this intercept you just draw. That's going to be our resultant, right? So that's going to be our R. So therefore, the diagonal 
of this parallelogram that extends from this point uh, to this point, uh, intercept, that's going to be our R. R here means what? Resultant. So that's going to be R here is equal to A plus B. R here is equal to A plus B. Okay. Then, but how do you know the magnitude? So the magnitude will be how how, how strong this is, this force is, right? How long it is. The, the longer the length, it's going to be indicated the stronger, right? The force. Well, I feel like I'm talking about Star Wars here. Anyway, okay. So now we learned about parallelogram. Now let's look at another method, method number two. Method number two is going to call the triangular rule. So, how is this method number two uh, coming from? Because the parallelogram here can be reduced to triangle. So, for example, you have force F1 and force F2 applied that is point O. Then, in order to find the resultant of those two forces using the parallelogram, so let's quick review. So, you from the arrowhead, draw a parallel force, and from arrowhead to another um, parallel line, then you create this point, then you have your resultant right here. That's our resultant. But this parallelogram, you draw, you realize this diagonal basically create two identical triangle here. That's how triangular rule comes from. If I'm just taking extract the top triangle, then we have a triangular rule. Why? Because this is our force one, force one here. And F force two, however, is moved. It's moved to here because this is going to be the arrowhead of one and this line is our F two because it's parallelogram, right? This force and this force, it's the same direction, do you agree? Same direction, they're parallel, and they have the same length, so they have the same magnitude, so that's F2. And then, what's our resultant? Resultant is going to be this line here, from here to here. That's our resultant. So instead of draw full-fledged uh, parallelogram, we can just go ahead, draw a tri triangle. So let's look at this triangle one more time. So how do you make a triangle instead of a uh, parallelogram? For example, I have this force here, P, applied at uh, uh, A here, and I'm gonna have a force Q going this direction. Now what do I do? We move the Q right here to this point. Start out there and draw a parallel line, and we have P and Q, then we draw from A to that point, and that's going to be our resultant. So the sum of two vectors can be found arranging, arranging P and Q in a tip-to-tail fashion, tip-to-tail uh, tail fa uh, fashion, and then connecting the tail of the P right here to the tip, the arrowhead of Q. So you got it. So if you go tip-to-tail, and you got it. So knowing that concept, we can look at this example right here. If I have here how many forces? P, Q, and three. Three forces. And uh, we want to find the resultant of those three forces. How do we do so? If we're using the triangular rule and the tip to tail fashion, so P and Q are in tip tail fashion. So P, if I add a P and a Q, this is what I'm going to have from A to this, right? That's going to be my P and a Q, this green line. But remember, I have another force where? I have another force S. And my P and a Q is this green line right here. So this is another head to tail, uh, tip tail fashion. So if I'm at P plus Q here, this force, with this force S, what do we have? We're going to draw from here. Let's create another triangle. So using the triangular rule one more time, that's going to be our resultant.
That's our resultant, again, for a triangular rule. So knowing that, we can uh, do the triangular rule multiple times to take care of finding the resultant. Uh, by the way, how do we arrange PQS in this fashion? It's starting from here. Um, let's go look at this sketch A. Sketch A is ca called a concurrent force, which means all the set of forces going through the same point, which they do, A here. And if we want to find, uh, uh, find the resultant of those three forces, how do we get from here to here? I will explain here. So you start with P here. And then we can move the Q to this point, the parallel, that's going to be your Q. And once you create that, we can move this S to this arrowhead, then draw another line that parallel to S, right? So that's how we got, uh, got this earlier. And then if you look at it, instead of doing it twice, I'm just going to tip to tail you see, this is going to be our arrowhead, and then connecting to that, that's arrowhead, and going around tip to tail fashion. So if you do this, you will be able to get the resultants just from here to the arrowhead. That's going to be your resultant. That's exactly what this is. Okay? Um, all right, so that is the parallelogram and the triangular rule. Okay, see you next time.